Welcome to the sixth digital disability film podcast with Dr. Alison Wilde, Dr. Miro Griffiths, and myself, Dr. Paul Dark. Uh, and we'll start with we're reviewing two films and Hadhun 2018, uh, an Indian film, and which should in English be called. Uh, all standing, but is actually in English called Rolling to You, and in French is Tout le monde debout from 2018 with Frank de Bosque. So we'll start with let's start with the Indian film and a Hadun, uh, which I must say I enjoyed. Uh, I'm sure it's, it is quite dubious in many respects, but uh, I must admit I don't watch many Indian films, the ones I have. I've always found a little uh, unique, shall we say. Uh, the last one I watched was a three hour epic about uh, child children dying in hospitals through lack of available organ donation that had far too much singing and dancing in it for my view. <laughs> uh, uh, and he, there's murder in it and everything. And then all of this jolly singing and dancing, which is conventional in, in Bollywood cinema, but it was just a bit too much for me. And I, I feared that in this one, uh, but actually they made the music quite part of the narrative, which I didn't mind at all. Uh, but I would say, I, I, I think Miro, and I'm going to steal Miro's word, he called it to me earlier, a roller coaster. Of film. It's up and down, up and down, up and down. Is he blind? Is he not blind? Is he blind? Is he not blind? Who cares? And, my expectations of it were quite low, so I did actually, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it had a degree of originality in its narrative. It took you places that you weren't expecting to go, such as people stealing your kidneys, uh, which seemed to be a, a whole new thrust into it. Uh, although it is about someone with an impairment, which we'll talk about a bit later on, uh, it's not really about that, and that is just a narrative ploy to push the story forward. And and if you, I felt if you just accepted it for that, rather than as anything that had anything particularly to say about visual impairment, and I was quite surprised it didn't really say anything about visual impairment. Uh, it, it seemed to be almost an irrelevance to it, except in pushing the narrative forward. There was nothing about the experience of it particularly, there were a couple of lines here and there. And so because I had no expectations of it, well, my expectations were quite low. I was fearing it and dreading it. I did quite enjoy it. I thought it was fairly well acted. There are a couple of scenes that were a bit ropey. I quite liked the mixing of the old Indian cinema stuff with there's an old Indian actor star in it who plays the husband who gets murdered and he's always watching his old movies and the singing in there. That's the way they crept in a little bit of Bollywood singing. And I must admit, I quite enjoyed it, I'm afraid to say. Alison. Okay, I'll, I'll start with positive, <laughs> positive stuff. Um, I was really excited when I saw the first um, few frames of the film. I thought I was, I was really pulled in. Uh, I thought that was quite excited about the, the hair, starting it all off. Less excited when I saw the hair, hair reappear, because by that time I'd kind of lost interest, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but... No, it was a really nice visual, and I thought, oh, I'm really, really excited about this. I, 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 I wish I'd watched more um, Indian film. I've, I've watched quite a bit, and I differ from you in that I was really, really looking forward to the singing and the dancing, and there wasn't anywhere near enough in, uh, in, uh, of that uh, in it for me. Having said that, I think one of the better uh, things about the film was the music. Uh, and uh, of course, there was a, it, there was not just um, the music that had been written specially for the film, uh, but there was also fairly uh, what most people call classical music, European music, uh, things like that. And uh, yeah, I, I really quite like the soundtrack. Um, I, I agree, it takes you places uh, that you didn't expect. Unfortunately, I had to keep replaying that because I thought I must have fallen asleep or something because I, I, I thought, oh, all right, did I miss something? No, Why no, that was now? the main character who fell asleep. That's when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I kind of uh, 
I suspended disbelief as you, as you do most most of the time. And then we got to the when we got to the organ harvesting thing, I kind of wanted to start to begin to play Scrabble on my phone a bit. I, I have to admit. Um, <laughs> And yeah, I mean, just based on such ridiculous medical things in terms of the blindness. It, I mean, yes, it wasn't about blindness, but it kind of also was. And the idea that getting somebody else's eyes and restoring your sight and everything, just just like, uh, it's just like, no, I'm, like like Miro said, I, I, I'm not going to get this time back. So I felt quite resentful about that. Really. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, one thing, and I know we're not talking about the other film yet, but I was quite interested in, in the way that both films, and I won't try not to mention them, but they both featured um, dis disabled, are they disabled or are they not men? Yeah. And, um, and I was quite interested in, in the different ways the women were used in them. And in the first one, I have to say, I think the woman was used better, uh, the central woman. It was quite nice to see um, uh, um, uh, a non-white woman um, uh, playing somebody who who had, had had quite a nicely fleshed out role, I think, even if you know a bit stereotyped in some ways. Uh, so that that was a bit of a positive. Um, yeah, I think that's all all the good things I have to say about it. Um, like I, I said the visuals didn't live up to the initial frames, but for me, really. So, yeah, mm. that, that's more or less what I've got to say for now. Miro, what do you think? And then we'll come back a bit more about the other bits of it. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, I, I thought it was a roller coaster before, uh, in the sense of I, there was just so many twists and tw turns that I thought this is getting ridiculous because first we're thinking about his story in terms of pursuing a music career. So I'm thinking, right, so that's, that's what the film's going to be about. Then it turns to him pursuing a relationship, pretending pretend to have a visual impairment. So I thought, right, that's what the film's going to be about. Then it was witnessing a murder. <laughs> then it was having his organs harvested. Then it was, I want to be cured. I'm resentful for the, for the fact that I'm now, I now have a visual impairment. Uh, and then, you know, then he's, he's, saved, he's saved by, uh, by not knowing that he's actually talking to the, to the, to the, uh, the murderer. And saying the murder should be spared, but then the murderer decides to try and kill him anyway, and then <laughs> and then end up hitting hitting a hair. So it was all. I think it, it was a roller coaster, but it was also very very messy. I think the narrative, um, and that 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 Sorry. that prevented me from trying to trying to be clear on what the overall message was. And I think that's where I'm kind of stuck. I think you know there is there is some. I suppose you could possibly engage with the film uh, on the basis of of poverty and class and there were some interesting little bits there you know he lived he he was he was pretending to have a visual impairment and then living in a in a house that's subsidized by a charity uh for for tail people that was yeah. quite interesting um, get that further yeah but and i think yeah there was, and then i think there were some interesting bits in the sense of you know a lot the it, he, he, the, the story around his, about his, you know, his body in a sense of, you know, he wants his impairment at the beginning of the film because he sees it as a way to enhance his uh, skills <laughs> as a musician. Of course, we can think about the kind of tropes around, you know, yeah. a, a, a deficiency in one sense gives you a superb efficiency uh, in, in others. But then as the film progresses, you know, the, the idea of the body becomes a commodity in terms of trying to harvest its organs. Then it becomes a fixation in the sense of trying to uh, find suitable eyes and uh, matching eyes for himself to use, uh, which was a little bit bizarre. So I'm I'm still trying to understand what's the what's the overall key message of the film, <laughs> and I think the messiness and the roller coaster aspect of it leads me to think that there is there is no message in this film other than just watch it for two hours and, and try your best. I've got, I've got one for you for the message of the film. Don't don't decide to, to make a short film into a long one without having some serious thought, because that's where it originated from a French film, didn't it? A French short indeed, film. Indeed, indeed. Because it's, it's got that first line, the first part of the first, first thing you see in the film is, the, is, that, is that quote, what is life? It depends on the liver. I'm still, I'm still confused by what that, <laughs> what does that mean? And that's about <laughs> organ harvesting, obviously. <laughs> I, 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 I have a much more positive view about it, actually. I think, 
there is no point to it. It is just a film. And, and I think that was the whole point. It wasn't about a subject particularly. It was trying to be a kind of Hitchcockian twist turn, you know, uh, MacGuffins and, you know, taking it this way, leading it that way. And, and, and equally, the unreliable narrative, uh, narrator as well, you know, going back to The Great Catsby, the whole unreliable narrator. So, for example, the tale of the hare that frames the whole end section. I read that as a lie. It was all a lie, because then the final scene reveals him, in my view, to be not visually impaired at the end. But he's still playing that role. So the whole story about not being blind again, but being blind is a lie. And, yeah, and it's so, how to Don Quixote, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. But 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 I think I think it did it. It did it in a, in a fairly entertaining way with some nice music along the way, some re, re, and the whole point almost uh, telenovela kind of ridiculous narrative thrusts. You know, like. When he gets out, the, the best scene to me was when the lift door opens and the murderer's throwing the old lady over the balcony. <laughs> and you just yes. thought, that's fantastic. That, you wouldn't get that in American and, and Western cinema because they'd say, it's just too ridiculous. But it wasn't. It was fun. And, and I thought it did have a sense of humour. It did have a whole fun thing. I like the when he witnesses the murder that they think he can't see. They're all, they're miming around him to get rid of the body and stuff. There was absolutely no realism to it whatsoever, but I, 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 I did bizarrely enjoy it. And, and I, I, I did surprise myself that I enjoyed it because it was quite long, two, two hours, 19 minutes. Uh, and I really enjoyed, and again, because uh, Mira and I were talking about something else about uh, mashup films. And I loved that piano bit at the end. I hope you stayed to see it after the titles where there it's just loads of clips to a single tune of piano playing in Indian cinema over the last 40 or 50 years, which I just thought was wonderful. It was a wonderful way to end it. So I think there was stuff in there about class. You could add that the organ harvesting stuff was about the worthlessness in society to people who are impaired because it was because he was blind that they were doing it. He kind of like he he had a worthless life, uh, and so I think there were there were minor little points in there that it was making about Indian culture uh, and its treatment of disabled people. Uh, but equally, the kid was desperate the, to reveal that he wasn't visually impaired, and uh, and there's there was I think there was and again because I don't particularly know Indian cinema, I think there was a lot about class and wealth as well, and a lot about money, and a lot about greed. Uh, from the like the 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 man who's murdered, it, it does seem to end up being for money, apart from just love. And uh, Miro summed up that the lover looked like a chubby Freddie Mercury, which I thought was just a great line that he mentioned to me that he wasn't going to say because I said just say he's a fat Freddie Mercury, but he doesn't want to ruin his reputation like I don't have one. So, uh, <laughs> but I I. I'm surprised I'm defending it actually so much. Uh, and, and equally, I was very surprised because I've had this impression that Indian cinema, you know, I think when, when Richard Gere kissed someone in public and it was a, a terrible controversy, whatever, and yet there was, there was a lot more kind of sexuality in this than I, I would have expected. Again, that's on, that's on the basis of my yeah. ignorance, uh, which, which I thought was interesting. I suppose you could, you could I mean, if we're, if we're trying to delve into the film, I think you know, the opening bit with the hair, it, you could almost take it on a kind of meta narrative of, you know, it's a it's a it's a hair with a visual impairment because it's missing one eye, mm. and, and which I don't I'm still not entirely sure what was the significance of that, but it, but you know it how it's you know in the first few minutes the the hair is 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 monitored it, it's it's in the form of surveillance then it's chased then it's tried to you know, and then it's tried to be attacked I suppose then as you watch the rest of the film it becomes a a, a glimpse into Actually, you're going to have an individual with a visual impairment being chased, being try who's trying to be killed by all different angles, by different people for various different gains. And I think, you know, Paul, your point about the money issue is important because actually yeah. most of the characters in the film, their 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 fixation is on wealth, isn't it? It's yes. pursuing a career in music. 
um, a, a grand career in music, trying to make money. It's trying to make money off off the death of of um, of a very you know rich um, old actor. It's the child who lives next door who's always trying to sell information to try to use as as a way yeah, to yeah. to make profit. Yeah. So I think yeah, the issue around wealth and and and, and fixation on money, I suppose, is is something to 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 consider. And I th I think the hair story at the beginning is the key actually. Uh, in the, it, it, it's obviously like uh, Peter Rabbit. It's a story. It's a made-up story. And what you're about to see is a made-up story. And then the end confirms that actually this is by and large his story and it's all a pack of lies. And he's just, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, a huckster. That what a bizarre word to pick out of the sky, uh, 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 and and I I thought it did that quite well. Uh, I and I love the fight in 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 the uh, with where she's in the wheelchair tied up and she's beating the death out of him with crutches in the <laughs> in the old. I just love that fight. Uh, I thought it was fantastic, and I I want a pyramid circular shaped fire extinguisher because I think every home should have one. Which she picks up and throws through a glass window and it was just a wonderful shaped fire extinguisher but uh, I uh, I love that scene where they were just fighting and he's blind and she's tied to the wheelchair and then she's beating the shit out of him with a, a crutch uh, I think I, I think I'm, yeah if you look at the impairment aspects as well it, yeah the narrative was pretty was it was pretty stereotypical wasn't it in a sense oh yeah uh, you know, you, using using impairment to heighten the senses, so he could be a great musician. And then other, and then even when he's performing in the restaurant, all the uh, all the people having the meal who then start to have a, start dancing, have also got to then cover their eyes yeah. as a way to kind of feel a connection to him and his music, which was which was which was bizarre. I, I and, thought that that was that was the bit that was the only bit I didn't like actually, where they were all dancing with blindfolds. So that that, that kind of simulation exercise that you know we used to call it in the old days, and how crap that is. Uh, that was the only bit I didn't like. But again, it just added to the whole surreal experience. In my view. But even you know, even the premise of you know of blindness as well, in, in the sense of you know she she the 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 woman who's in, in the middle of all these murders. Then just find find a drug that can only that gives you it, will, it knocks you unconscious and you wake up and then you wake up with a visual impairment and then <laughs> and then of course and then he, and then his fixation is on no matter what happens to anybody else I want I want my eyesight back even though for the first half of the film he talks about how you know covering his eyes up is 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 helps him become a much better uh, 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 pianist so yeah I think there was there was yeah it, it didn't really say anything very sensible I think on. On impairment, or no, I'd agree it didn't. Would you agree, Alison? Any more to say on that, or have you uh, just wishing you could have your life back? <laughs> <laughs> Mainly the latter. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was trying to think of you know whether there was, like you said, uh, Miro, a, a message, and I was trying to think is, is it saying something about the male gaze and uh, or the lack of a male gaze and male prowess, but I really didn't think it was. Uh, it, uh, you know, particularly because, as I mean, like I said, there's one one strong woman in it, and that was quite a good, strong performance. She's quite a, a well-known actor, isn't she? Mm -hmm. um, but but the but the the uh, object of his affections and the and the very pass kind of passive woman who 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 they set up as not a passive woman and then became a very passive woman. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's it saying about his his. Uh, gays then not gays and gays and not gays and that the fact that she still follows him to london and uh, despite the fact that he's he's being totally dishonest and and why what i mean why did that happen so i don't i'm not sure in the end it did say anything about you know um the male gays apart from the fact that he wanted it no i i don't think it said anything about anything in particular well, and that's but i around, enjoyed it and that's just reminded me Sorry, I did look on Wikipedia, and yes, he, he had, sorry to spoil for you, but he had taken her eyes. That's what the director intended. Because I just thought, what does that mean? What does that ending mean? Yeah, I, I took it that it was all a lie. And, but equally, you could say, it, it actually played with all of those cliches quite well. Uh, it, you know, not 
intellectually, but it played with them to the extent of him pretending to be blind at the end and how people love that. People love, you know, uh, deaf musicians, blind musicians. They love that. And you just think, why? <laughs> <laughs> and and wow. it, it was almost like that actually he wasn't really a very good musician and he had to be the blind to get to get the gig, to get the money, to get the girl. And, and that says something about society. And I think that, but actually, I think we should watch the remake. <laughs> I know when I, when I found it was a remake, my, my one word is why. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, that's a remake in another Indian language. You wait till the Americans remake this as well. So. Oh my God. Well, they didn't have profits, didn't they? At the box office. It was a big hit. It was a big yeah. hit. You know, I, you know, I, I, I enjoyed it. I anyway. think, it, yeah, it was, it's, it's, it's a strange film. Well, I, 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 I suppose... <laughs> I, I think, right, yeah, come on. No, I think... Well, I just think about your comment about, um, you know, people You know, people are fixated and love the idea of, of the impaired, gifted artist. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, it, it reminds me of that idea, you know, I think it was the Oliver, you know, Mike Oliver who talks about how yeah, so people want to be perceived as being ordinary people doing ordinary things, but they're elevated, or they are in, you know, or they or they are lowered to a, a point of inferiority. But in this case, you have you know the the elevation of the individual to the point where, uh, yeah, is mu is music and it, well, I mean the the lyrics are rubbish for, for the songs. I thought they were just bizarre, but yeah, <laughs> but and I think it's not that great. But everyone loves it because it is. It's a kind of it's the damaged artist from their perspective. You know, he's not normal. He's abnormal, and yet he has this gift that we should embrace, and that and that gives us something. And you can see that, you know, as I said, in, in the restaurant scene where people cover their eyes as a form of dancing to kind of feel connection. You even see it in the sense of when he's uh, being romantic with the with the girl from the, who drives around on a scooter. You know, she covers her eyes as well when they actually perform uh, sexual acts as a way to again create that connection, uh, which is which I'm still a little bit perplexed and a little bit a bit. <laughs> I've always got women to pretend they've got spina bifida when they're with me. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah, in much the same vein as these two films. Distasteful. <laughs> I suppose, you know, a way to link out of this film into the other one is, uh, uh, you know, is, is you've got this question of, of, you know, how far do you go to prevent the illusion shattering? And you know, even when he's surrounded by the violence, by the destruction, uh, by death, he still wants to maintain that that um, that lie, that collection of lies, in order to you know position himself and continues to position himself as the musician who's loved, who's chased by by um, you know the people he has who are interested in him. Um, and I swear you can see that in the other film that we'll look at now or shortly. You know around that you know how long how long do you push the lie in order to cement the relationships and cement the objectives that you have which you know both in in these films has been about trying to pursue well, to a certain extent trying to pursue a relationship a beautiful segue into the next film there so the next film rolling to you tuple mon debut let's start with alison because you obviously love this one too oh, yeah, <laughs> <deep -like thing. laughs> Uh, well, oh, I don't know. Did I prefer it to the other one? <laughs> no, actually, I t I, I'm bending towards you. I think even though the first one was way too long and I couldn't wait for it to finish, I preferred it to the second one. Uh, although the second one had more of a story, but then you knew how the story was going to pan out fairly early on into the film. Uh, I think clearly um, that was the director's first film, wasn't it? Who was also the leading guy. And mm -hmm. it showed. And I hope that he... he he's, he's, I think he's a decent actor, actually, to be fair to him. Uh, but I think he's got a long way to go with directing. Uh, again, the woman the woman was something of a cipher. Both of them were. Um, it, 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 this, you know, this whole thing, I, I thought we'd move past that bit of, like, you know, even the... Sorry. 
of, of disabled men at the centre. I know neither of them are disabled, but it always seemed to be the men who, who were kind of casting these uh, the, the, these sort of films. Uh, and I'm thinking, what would this have looked like if it had been if it had been the other way around? I, I just feel sure we wouldn't have stayed on board. Uh, with it, those of us who would do anyway, uh, till the end to, to see somebody who was um, lying about their impairment, especially when they've already set him up as, as quite a lascivious um, player. Again, you know, you've got the fact that he's rich as well. So it, it, even though it was easier to read as a film, uh, it, it kind of seemed to lack a bit of meaning again. Is well, we knew, we knew that it was posing a disabled man to get somebody into bed. And they'd already told us through, through the eyes of his friend that one day there was going to be a woman who came along who was going to be more than a notch on his bedpost. So we're already, we, they already told us the plot before we started on it. Uh, yeah, just a bit lazy, really. <laughs> <laughs> Miro. Well, I prefer this one to the, uh, to the first film we've reviewed. Um, I, I, I suppose I, I got some more meaning from this film than I got from the um, from the from the other one. In a sense, I think the, the key message here was about the lie that we tell ourselves in order to find value, find worth in what we're doing. Um, and I, I suppose you know what you've got here is with the with the disabled woman's character is that position of trying to shatter that illusion. So again, it's, it sits uncomfortable because you've got the idea of the disabled person has to be the enlightened one who finds and tells people how they should be. And of course, in this story, you've got this individual living a lie who's, you know, who's racist, who's sexist, misogynistic, uh, and, and, then, you know, and then feels that he can be a better person by being with the disabled person. And even though uh, I think later on in the film, when you get the, the when you get the disabled, I think it's Florence, the name is, disabled character talking to her sister, and she's like, "Oh, I, I know that he's, you know, he's 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 lying, but uh, but happiness is is, uh, but you know, happiness is is better than being alone." Again, reinforcing oh, no. the kind of yeah, the asexuality of of it, or the loneliness associated with disabled people, you know, can't have relationships, shouldn't have relationships, should just be grateful for whatever they get. So that was problematic, but I sense. I suppose the only, the only glimmer was this idea of, of you know, this this message of the illusion of, of lying and why people lie to themselves, why people lie in order to pursue and try to achieve their objectives. And I think you see that most notably in the scene in Lords, which was my favourite scene in the film, um, if if I had to pick one scene from the film, and <laughs> in, and you know that scene with the with the priest when he says, you know, everyone comes here, everyone knows a lot, you know, it's just a lie. You know, people, if you get, if you get, if you pretend you got a miracle, you, you know, you're lying twice. Um, and I thought that was, that was, you know, the most poignant part of the film, I thought, because it, it, it brings that question of, of trying to, you know, keep, keep those lies going in order to, in order to, you know, achieve what you want to achieve. But to do that, you have to then uh, ignore the hurt that you cause other people. And in this story, it almost reinforced that message of, yeah, it's okay to be hurt and it's okay to be lied to because at least you're going to have happiness at the end of it, even if you know that happiness is built on, on a have, false Have premise. you ever been to Lourdes? No, I know you have, but I've, have, have it's, you, on my, it's, on my, it's on my list now. <laughs> have you been to Lourdes, Alison? No. No. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing place. It's fantastic. Yeah. It, uh, in, in the sense that it's ridiculous. It is utterly ridiculous. I, I'm not. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not anything. Uh, and I went because I just thought you, you've got to go. It's just. Uh, it's just. It's something you've got to do. Uh, I'm going to defend it. I. I. I think it was about. It was about attitudes, and how France and French people need to change their attitudes, because they've inherited their attitudes from past generations. It was quite clunky in the way it did that, in the fact it was very clearly he, because of his parents, he didn't like his mother, he didn't like his father, and that had made him resentful of women, uh, and it made him misogynistic. His, and that his easy. Huh? That's easy. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and I think, you know, France, particularly in relation to attitudes to disabled people, is decades behind Britain. You know, we're, we're, we're heading back there, pretty quick 
but I think they do have a serious attitudinal problem to difference and, and to women. They're a very ma a misogynistic culture in my view. And I think it was a, I think that was the attempt it was trying to make. And I think it did it fairly well within its own confines as a, as a comedy by a stand up comedian. Uh, I've seen quite a few films by this guy. There's a film he made with Gerard Depardieu called Disco, which I thought was really, really good. Uh, uh, and I, th I thought it was a shame that they didn't have a disabled actress. I thought that was a bit of a shame, but, and, and there was a lot of weaknesses over the narrative. So for example, she could obviously tell that he wasn't disabled. Well, we could all obviously tell that she wasn't disabled, uh, which made it a bit of a, bit, yeah. a yeah. bit of a serious problem. Because if you're talking about scuffs, you need to talk about atrophy of limbs and all of that kind of stuff. And it just wasn't there and it was all, all, all ridiculous. But I thought, you know, I have a fair degree of knowledge of French culture and cinema and it is a deeply problematic misogynistic place. It really is 30 years behind us in relation to treatment of disabled people. They're, they're not part of society. They're not part of the community. I thought the key problem was, is that they made her talented. Uh, that was another shame. Cause again, we have another disabled musician which you know is just getting a bit wearing and sports person yeah you know because it, it's 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 making it tough for us untalented people such as myself uh to uh survive because uh, the expectation on us is getting too high for someone with actually no talent such as myself but uh i i i because i i'd seen it a long time ago and i remember i quite enjoyed it and then i was watching it again and i was thinking oh god this is shit <laughs> But actually, it had a lot going for it within the confines of its own thing. And I think it, it's very difficult to wish it was something else. Uh, and, and I do it, we all do it. But actually, I try to see it in much more of the way in, in the kind of contemporary French cinema comedy. Uh, I think there's, another, there's a film we saw recently about... And, and you should probably try and watch it. It's not about disability. It's where gender roles are swapped. So a bloke bangs his head and wakes up and the women are all in power and have all the status and everything and the men don't. And, and it flips it completely. And it, again, 10, 15 years behind what I would say British culture is or even American culture in that respect. Uh, but it... it it, they have a long way to go. And I, I think this was a a step towards that, actually. Uh, and, you know, it was a conventional film. It didn't particularly have any surprises. You knew where it was going to go from day one. But that actually blaming your parents for your dubious attitudes was quite a, quite, not necessarily, uh, what's the word? What am I looking for? It wasn't, it wasn't particularly original, but it is in French culture. You know, that, that reverence for the elderly, when in fact it is about stepping out and saying they are sexist, misogynistic tossers, you know, when we don't do that enough. And that's why we left Europe and had a Brexit referendum. But, <laughs> Alison. Um, I think given the context that, the, that he's playing, the director who's written it as well, is playing that person who's been affected by his parents like that. Um, uh, uh, so he's written, I don't know, there's kind of a, what is it, like a hermeneutic thing going on here. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, well, what's that saying that he's written it like that? And then he is going for a story which kind of excuses him in some way and also has what I think is a terrible depiction of a disabled woman, just when, dis when disabled with female characters are becoming, you know, it's only the past 10 years or so that disabled female characters have been recognised that, 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 that they should be there. And then he's, as you said, has got this, this uh, doubly talented woman who somehow is just grateful to have a man. No, no, no I agree. And, and it's just like, I, I don't know where the excuses <clears throat> stop for that. But, but one thing that was over, sorry, in, in an instant was where... Hold on, you're breaking up for the moment. Uh, the, um, and then there was a really big noise. Say that, say that again, Alison, you broke up. Yeah. A, a person came in the restaurant and uh, who they knew, and they were with yeah. a partner 
who whose head you couldn't see was cut off in the frame. Yep. It was on my mind anyway. Yeah, but, it was. Yeah. And then they did speak. They did speak, and it sounded like it was a trans woman. Yeah. And it, it seemed to be played for a cheap laugh. And in in a way, that that kind of was more arresting than anything else in the film. So I'm like, what what what's that about? Cause given the other female representations, because we had his, we also had his assistant, who you know was actually quite an interesting character. And he kind of developed her and dropped her, then developed her a bit more in that uh, in that she had that kind of plea about about how she'd been trying to get his attention, and it, it, it did feel very much like women were disposable in this film. So in the end, I, I ended up not being that interested in what he was doing, but I was quite interested in why he, as the actor who'd also written the film, actually managed to have this. And I'm, I'm taking into account what you say about French culture, but it, it really did feel um, slightly dodgy, actually. Well, I think, yeah, I think, I think parts of the film, it almost like it undermined itself through the idea of cheap laughs. So yes. I, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't enjoy the scene in the, in the restaurant. I, I was really perplexed. What about when he was with the sports people? Well, well, uh, we'll come to that thing, but I just want to say, you know, the, the body and the functioning of the body is seen as a site of comedy a lot in this film. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what, that's why I don't really understand the kind of the connection. I mean, I get you know what you've been saying, Paul. I, <coughs> but of course, I think from the film's perspective, it it doesn't account for that. It's not trying to say a message on that, um, which again, which again, I think is problematic because then it uses it uses impairment and functioning as a site of trying to draw out laughs and and draw out, um, the comedy. Um, and you know, all the way through the film, you've got this kind of you know he's the character, the main character is conflicted because he. He sees the same people as being asexual. He, he sees actual you know, the, the performance of sex as being almost disgusting, or it's a point of medical curiosity. You know, when he's when he's discussing it with his with his medical uh, friend. Um, so you know, all the way through is, and again, you know, even with the sport, which we'll come to now, I suppose, you know, he's surprised that actually non-disabled people would be interested in in a sport uh, or a disabled athlete. So, you know, on the one hand, you can say, well, you know, it, it, it's a character trying to, be posi trying to be positioned as being this kind of naive on the, on the road to being enlightened and the sale person has to enlighten him. Uh, but at the same time, then I think it undermines itself by the, the sheep left. And, and also, you know, let's face it, at the end of the film, oh. it's the non-disabled person who saves the, the disabled person, almost to reinforce that idea of, oh, actually, yeah, I do. You know, I, I do want to be in a relationship. I do, you know, love him. Mm. And I'm going to come, and, I, and therefore I'm going to come save him at the end and carry him over, mm. over the yeah, line. Yeah, a metaphor of the non of, of the disabled woman carrying a a a, a, a non disabled man. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, he criticizes corduroy trousers, and there's nothing wrong with corduroy trousers. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with corduroy trousers. I completely agree with you. I, and well, I suppose I would say I don't I don't disagree with anything that you've said, and I think there were. A couple of cheap jokes, I think the Chinese restaurant scene in particular, almost under, undermined everything that I think it was trying to do. Uh, and, and I think it was interesting, like you've just said, you know, it's taken 10 years to get to be acceptable for disabled women roles to exist. France doesn't do that, you know, and I think this is part of it. And I think it was a good step towards that because, you know, it, it is a bit like, you know, Nanette Newman back in the Raging Moon in the early seventies. It, it's they're that far back in in the depiction yeah. of disability in popular mainstream cinema. There probably are some exceptions to that within a kind of more art house kind of thing, uh, I, but probably not actually. But it, it, it's. It, but I think you're right. There were far too many cheap jobs. I I think it was about trying, and I think. I think it reminded me of when I first started looking at cinema back in the, you know, the early 80s, how non-disabled people trying to make other non-disabled people accepting of disabled people. Uh, you know, the, there, was a, there was a French state advert, and it's probably about 15 years ago, uh, where there's, there, there's all these people around a dining table. Uh, and, and again, he would know this because it was a massive French television campaign. And then this, this really boring person who is a, a, and I think, and I use the word because I think they use it, who's a complete asshole in relation to everybody at the meal. 
And of course, then everybody gets up and leaves. And the person who's the complete arsehole is a disabled person in a wheelchair. And the point is, I think the final line is something like, they're just like us. Some of us are arseholes. <laughs> uh, which was really quite revolutionary in France and radical. But there was a bit too much of that kind of trying to get the crash joke in that didn't really work. Alison, you were going to say something. Um, yeah, I, I just think one thing that draws the films together, I, I, I don't know, it's a bit of a provocative question. Given the fact that there are, one thing that does draw them together is they're both trying to get those physical laughs, as, as you said, you know, from like, oh, body. So, you know, they, they, aren't they funny? Uh, and we're trying to get into disability politics. And it's almost like a, a missionary type thing in, in both of them, to some extent. But let's explore this. Wow, isn't it fascinating? And, you know, and, and bodies are funny and, and all the rest of it. And it's like, for me, I mean, I've, I've got an issue. Of, I, I'm not suggesting that, uh, you know, non-disabled people shouldn't be in disabled things per se but i think it really really does show and as i've written in my book um you know the fact there are so few writers we need a link to that book on the website all right <laughs> the, fa the fact that there are so few writers it shows that over and over again you get things like like that um that that child um uh, wonder uh, uh, the thing about the boston bombing is over and over again we get this kind of films that are really in a way, if you've been kind, valiantly trying to cover every angle because they're so so fascinated by it, yeah. and in some ways you can see the curiosity there. And I think that kills on wheels as well. Or I've heard other disabled people like it, um, but it, it just it almost seems like this is one of the things that happens when non-disabled writers are uh, owning all all the authorship of, of films like that is that they try to do too much. And you end up thinking, I'm not so sure what the point is here. Some of some of the comedy around disability ends up being uh, just so heavy-handed, so so little subtlety. And I felt both of these, despite their good points, uh, uh, suffered quite a lot from this. No, no, I'd agree. I, I'd say a couple of things. A, we, we, we will be doing Kills on Wheels at one point. So uh, yeah, I'm sure you're really excited. <laughs> I've already reviewed it once. I won't be saying much else. <laughs> Uh, and we'll do the American version of it as well, which I think was the original, and then the, the Hungarians remade it. Uh, but I, I, and I, and again, I don't disagree with any of that. I, I think one of the key problems I've always had, though, is 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 that notion that if disabled people are doing it, it'll be better, and that won't. Ne that isn't necessarily so. A because they've often had to compromise so much to get to be in the position to be the creator and the maker. Uh, and actually then there's the pressure to deliver the conventional narrative to then do that. So I, I'm not a great believer in that. And I, but I think it's a shame when something like the two that we've had didn't have significant disability, disabled people's input to give it a depth that I think that they were trying for, particularly the French film. Uh, but, uh, and, 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 and again, and again, it's that often used trope of, of pretending to be disabled. And I quite liked that both of them tried to use it a bit more originally than your conventional kind of, you know, someone's killing everybody and then it turns out it's the man or the woman in the wheelchair. And, and it was a bit better than that on average. So, Miro, you've got something to say. I can see you bubbling up with excitement. <laughs> no, no, well, I just think on that, you know, I think, the, yeah, it has... They, they were they were the, the stories were clever i just think i think the, you know the way it was delivered and some of the extra bits they've added is problematic um i i, I think my my problem my, my worry is is that you know audiences that are not engaged in the kind of discussion that we're in see this and think these are really wonderful films about disability and when you've got the harmfulness of the way that women are depicted um, you know, just building on, uh, on Alison's point before, yeah, you know, the secretary, uh, you know, tells him about actually how isolated she feels, um, you know, how how dismissed she feels. But that's all fixed because he gives her a, a present of a cardigan, you know, and that, and then she, uh, uh, yeah, everything's fine now. But, that's the relationship we but have. I will interject there. Nice cardigan. He has always noticed her, and that's the point. But he's lied. 
and it's that pressure of masculinity. And I'm, I'm not disputing anything he's saying, but he says a line, for example, she says, I haven't got that color. And he says, I know you haven't got that color because he has always noticed her, but he was too afraid. And men are so weak and they're afraid of their emotions. And so you could see that in a slightly different way. Is that you doing a wanker sign there? No, I'm doing a tiny violin sign. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just did a wanker sign about you. But uh, it, it's done right. And again, I'm not disputing is they, they are all as bad as you say. But actually, I think that, you know, there are things in it that, and I think your point, Nero, is really important that it doesn't matter what you and I think of it. The mainstream audience are going to see it in a completely different way. And that's, and that's the problem, isn't it? Because yeah. about actually how, you know, we can ridicule it and we can be, uh, you know, and, and kind of be frustrated with it. But to an extent, <laughs> it, it is harmful to the representation of sale people because yeah. it pushes us back and it continues to push us back. So not yeah. only are we fighting to have the space to actually create a, any kind of political work, but we've also then got to do it in a way that actually tries to dismiss this and tell people that actually what they think is actually is, is great cinema or great storytelling or great uh, engagement in disability issues is deeply problematic and deeply worrying and deeply, uh, uh, um, uh, di well, I suppose dismissive of the, of the important needs you know, facing disabled people. This could be a film, I know, I know we don't want to go down the line of this should have been that, but you know, when you have a film on the sexuality or relationships to disabled people, these are important issues to kind of prioritize and tell. But they yeah. went, went in this way, it reinforced the idea of sale people are looking for gifts. They should be grateful for what they get. Um, they'll lie to themselves in order to accept the happiness. And I think that, that's what it, it, it is, is, sits uncomfortably for me. Even oh, though, as I said, my no, life. <laughs> enough about my life. But, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I would say, I think this, the French one in particular will challenge a lot of people's conventional views of disabled people. From they are starting so far behind from where we think we are that actually it will do an awful lot of good. There's lots of, and again, I'm not disputing that there's lots wrong with it, and it isn't the thing it could have been at the best, at the best it could have been. But I think it, it will have challenged a lot of ideas about disability for a lot of French people who will have seen this from a comedian who is an absolute star in France, an absolute yeah. star. Yeah. And, I, and I think one can't underestimate the significance of that, the power that he had, that he's used, he could have used it better, but, you know, and what it will achieve in pushing disabled people forward in France. That's all I'll say. <laughs> We got a problem now because we're gonna, we've reviewed these films and we think they're rubbish. And then next time when we do House of the Vista and Come As You Are, we're gonna, it's going to be even more negative. So we got, we, after this, we are trying to pull something out of the bag here. We get some decent films. Well, I'll leave that up to you two to pull something out of the bag. Even if you, well, I think we could do The Raging Moon because I think that's uh, one we've got to do. But we'll, we'll focus on the next one, which is Come As We Are, Come As You Are. Uh, Hasta la vista. But thank you both for this. I think we've covered these enough, and luckily people won't see us because I take all the video off, and uh, uh, so that's a bonus for, for the listener. But uh, thank you both.